This video is kindly brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence. Hi, my name's Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing how to go about making your very own cooler bag. I've made this cooler bag here out of a retro PVC tablecloth that I picked up for probably $2 from the op shop or thrift shop. And I think it has just made up into the cutest cooler bag ever. Obviously a recycled PVC tablecloth is perfect for this project because it is waterproof, but you can of course use some heavy duty canvas fabric instead. Fair warning though, this project is not really beginner friendly. It can be quite fiddly and a little bit tricky at times, but the end result is 100% worth the effort. So if you're up for the challenge, keep watching and let me show you how to make this cooler bag. For this project, you'll need a 61 centimeter or 24 inch zip, approximately two meters of strapping, a contrasting color actually looks pretty great for this project, one meter or one yard of fabric. And you will also need some reflective cooling material. If you can pick this kind of thing up at your local craft store, then great. But if you can't like me, then you can simply use a car sunshade like this instead. Due to the measurements needing to be 100% accurate for this project, I will only be using centimeters in this video. From your main fabric, cut one rectangle that measures 66 centimeters by 33 centimeters and another rectangle that measures 69 centimeters by 30 centimeters. Then from your reflective material, cut one rectangle that measures 64 centimeters by 31 centimeters and another rectangle that measures 67 centimeters by 28 centimeters. So all up, you will have four rectangles that will make up the body of the cooler bag. Start by overlocking or zigzag stitching along the raw edges of your main fabric rectangles as this will stop the fabric from fraying. Then starting with the two wider rectangles, lay the reflective material onto the main fabric rectangle, making sure the wrong sides are together and that the reflective side is facing up. The main fabric rectangle should be approximately one centimeter bigger along each side. Simply fold this overlapping one centimeter of fabric onto the top side of the reflective material. If you are working with PVC or a similar material like I am, it's important not to use pins as each time you pierce the fabric, it will leave a pinprick on the material. So instead it's best to use sewing clips which will hold the fabric in place without damaging or piercing the material. Next, stitch the folded edges in place. Again, when sewing this type of material, it's important not to make any mistakes that will require unpicking. As like I mentioned, every pinprick is irreversible. It's also a good idea to use a slightly longer stitch length than usual as if the stitching is too close together, it may actually perforate your PVC material, which could cause the seams to easily tear. Repeat this process for the smaller rectangles. Now it's time to fold the rectangles in order to form the boxy shape of the cooler bag. Starting with the smaller rectangle, measure and fold each of the edges in by 18 centimeters. Clip the rectangles at these folded edges. Then do the same for the larger rectangle, also folding at the 18 centimeter mark. With the larger, wider rectangle standing upright, slot the smaller rectangle into the remaining empty space so that it is turned 90 degrees. 
If folded correctly, the pieces should fit nicely together and the boxy shape of the bag should be starting to take place. Now to start working on the bag straps. Cut two straps that measure one meter each. Then fold the ends of the straps in by about one centimeter and then again by about 3.5 centimeters. Clip these folds in place. Then place the strap onto the center of the larger rectangle like this. Stitch the strap to the rectangle, making sure to reinforce the stitching at the ends with an X like this. Repeat for the other side of the strap. And once done, it should look like this. Next, stitch the other strap to the center of the other rectangle like this. And it's now time to actually start sewing the bag together. But first, let's take a quick break to talk about the sponsor of this video. This video has been very kindly sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence and launch your passion project. Whether you'd like to start making and selling your own products, create a beautiful portfolio to showcase your work, write a blog, or simply create any website of any kind, you can design and create your dream website all by yourself with Squarespace. You simply select from their range of beautifully designed templates and you can then change up the template as much or as little as you like. You can change everything from the overall layout of the website to all the fun things like the fonts and colors with just a few clicks, no background or knowledge needed in coding whatsoever. However, any website you create on Squarespace is guaranteed to look 100% professional and also just so beautifully designed. And I've recently heard from a few of you that have found out about Squarespace through my channel and have made their own website. And each one of you have said that Squarespace has really helped to elevate your brand, which I think is the perfect way to describe it. And personally, when I started my Squarespace website, I found I was a lot more confident in sharing what I'd created with the world and just overall really proud of the products and the brand I'd created. So if you'd like to create a website of your own, then make sure you head to squarespace.com using the link in the description below this video and take advantage of their free trials so you can really test out just how easy it is to use for yourself. And then when you're ready to launch your beautiful new website, head to squarespace.com slash rosary apparel for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video and let's get back to the tutorial. Now let's attach the zip. Start by cutting two smaller rectangles from your fabric that measure 8.5 centimeters by six centimeters. Fold the two shorter ends in by about half a centimeter and then stitch the folded edge in place. Next, fold the longer ends so that the raw edges meet together in the center like this. Again, stitch the folded edges in place. Place the end of the zip onto the center of this now folded rectangle and then fold the other end on top so that the zip end is completely enclosed. Do the same for the other end of the zip. Then stitch the rectangles in place. Your zip ends should now be nicely enclosed like this. Next, fold the zip in half and mark the center point with a water erasable pen or some tailor's chalk. Next, line up the center of the zip with the center of the larger rectangle and clip the rectangle to the zip, lining up the top edge of the rectangle with the zipper teeth. Then stitch the zip in place.
the zip should fit perfectly along the top edge of the rectangle. Next, take the smaller rectangle and fold it in half lengthways in order to find the center point. Then match this center point with the center point of the zip we marked out earlier. Clip the zip to the rectangle, making sure to do this while the zip is unzipped. When you get to the corners of the rectangle, fold the zip ever so slightly so that it conforms to the shape of the rectangle. Once clipped in place, it should look a little something like this. Stitch the other side of the zip in place. This part is quite fiddly and tricky, so I recommend taking it nice and slow and use as many of these clips as you can to keep the zip in place. Once stitched in place, you should be able to still zip up the zipper easily. And the lid of your cooler bag is now able to be zipped up. To sew up the remainder of the bag, start by folding the other end of the smaller rectangle in half lengthways to find and mark out the center point. And then do the same for the larger rectangle, but this time fold it in half widthways. Then match these center points together and clip the rectangles together. Stitch this first edge in place. And your bag should now be looking a little something like this. Now clip the remaining unstitched edges together. And again, if your measurements have been correct, these edges should nicely fit together to create a box shape. Then stitch the remaining edges together. Once again, this step is a little tricky, mainly because you have a full on box that you'll need to maneuver through your sewing machine. But I promise if you take it nice and slow, it can be done. And your adorable handmade cooler bag is now complete. Was it worth all of the effort? I personally think so. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you do have a go at making a cooler bag for yourself then I would love to see it. So make sure you tag me at Rosary Apparel when you share your photos on Instagram and if you did find this video helpful then I would really love it if you could give it a like and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more sewing type videos like this one. Thanks so much for watching this video until the very end and I'll see you in the next one.